Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another How to Draw video. This one's going to be a little different for most of my videos, though. It's going to be all real-time, no time-lapse at all. And I'm going to begin by uh, making a simple vertical line. Now, the topic uh, of today's video is a chibi cat girl, uh, or a neko girl. Um, sort of a standard Japanese uh, type of character. Not always drawn in a chibi way, but that's what I'm going to be doing today. And so I'm going to add now a uh, horizontal line going right across the top. And uh, then after I've got that in place, I'm going to measure down uh, three inches to make um, another line. How exciting is this that I'm doing <laughs> the ruler line part all <laughs> without resorting to time lapse? Aren't you glad? Uh, in any case, let me go ahead and uh, make uh, this bottom line here. It is, as I said, three inches from top to bottom. That is a little over seven uh, and a half centimeters for those of you using the metric system. And now let's go ahead and measure them, um, the exact halfway point between these two, because that's really going to help me figure out the size of the Neko girl's head. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, drop in this line, and then we can finally get past the sort of boring ruler part and uh, on to the uh, considerably more interesting aspect of uh, drawing the head and the body and so forth. Now um, the head is going to be a uh, circle, maybe just a little bit wide, but I wouldn't call it an oval. Um, and I'm not, uh, yeah, I'm not striving for uh, perfection here, but try to get it uh, centered fairly evenly on that uh, vertical line as you make your uh, ovalish, circulish uh, head shape. And it's going to be tilted um, just a bit. She's going to be tilting her head to one side with this pose. A big part of this video is going to be the uh, pose. Now here I said make it centered, but of course it, now I'm looking at it, it looks like it's maybe a little... <laughs> <laughs> uncentered, so <laughs> uh, what do you know? Sometimes they make mistakes, especially when it's all alive. Uh, let's go ahead and, um, you know what, I'll add the ears. And uh, using this central central line here as a, a starting point, I'm going to do one of the ears kind of pointing, you know, more or less straight up. Uh, and I'm going to have a, I'm going to give a kind of a curved shape. Different people have different preferences for these cat ears, and some of them make them very triangular indeed. I'm making mine just have a little bit of a curve. Uh, and then uh, over here, this other ear is going to be tilting quite a bit. In fact, it's going to uh, come in just uh, right around that uh, horizontal line as it points off, maybe just a little below that line as it points off in uh, a considerably different direction. And um, actually I may extend these lines here because the circle is, part of it is for the hair, and I want the ears to be sort of emerging from the hair rather than make it look like they're way in the back somewhere. If that makes any sense, and I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Let's go ahead and add one um, in fact, I'm, gonna, I'm not even going to use the ruler for this one. I'm going to do a diagonal line here. Uh, if you look top to bottom, find the midway point, and then maybe go just a touch below that. That's what I want to do. This line is going to be, eventually, for the uh, eyebrows, which shows you how low on the face the eyes uh, are going to go. And speaking of the eyes, let's go ahead and draw those. So pay attention, I'm going to make a, um, uh, these sort of classic smiley eyes that are sort of squinted shut, and uh, try to pay attention to the location of this one eye within this uh, quadrant, <laughs> which every time I say quadrant I feel like I'm in a science fiction movie. The quadrant. The eye is roughly centered in the quadrant, Captain. Um, and uh, so anyway, get that in there. Actually, it isn't completely centered. It's a little closer to that central dot, I would say. And then over here, maybe just a little closer, I'm going to make the other eye. And that gives us the happy, squinted uh, cat eyes. And from there, what should I do next? I think I'm going to go ahead and do the paws or the uh, hands. It's a tricky thing with the uh, cat girl characters because they, you know, they've got cat ears, they've got cat tails. I don't think they necessarily have cat paws, but uh, you very often see them making a 
uh, cat paw like uh, gesture, and that's exactly what I'm going to have this character doing. So I'm doing the um, looks like the left. It's got to be her right arm. Uh, over here, and uh, you can kind of imagine, I'll go ahead and draw this line that hooks up there. Uh, it's uh, bent at the elbow and then uh, being raised up. Now later on I'm going to add more definition to the, the paw or the hand, but notice how I'm making this shoulder kind of actually pass a little bit in front of the head. Uh, and that's something I'm doing quite deliberately. I want that to uh, uh, be part of the pose. And now I'm going to draw the other paw hand, paw hand, <laughs> inventing new words on the fly. <laughs> Nothing new there. I feel like I'm a little crazier than usual earlier in the video this time. What do you people think? Something in the coffee. Uh, so I'm making this other one maybe a little more uh, vertical up and down. But uh, I've seen this sort of, to me it's a classic uh, cat girl pose where they're raising the forearms and then, uh, as I said later on, sort of adopting the pose of uh, kitten or cat paws. Now that we've got that in place, let's go ahead and start working on the body. I'm going to um, make a curving line. Watch, it extends from sort of inside the elbow there. And uh, the final place where it stops is going to be down here, so you could even make that point if you want to. But just you get a sort of gentle curve, and this is going to be the whole lower uh, area where her skirt is. But uh, you're going to get an interesting shape here where it uh, the line comes up towards the head, then uh, cuts in, and you can pay attention to where it is in relation to that vertical line. But once it gets to around, oh, I guess just a little higher up than where that elbow is, that's where I want that to also uh, curve around, like so to uh, form the other knee, and she's going to have her legs sort of folded back underneath uh, her, again, sort of a classic uh, cat-like pose. Boy, I can't believe I've probably put like seven or eight minutes into just this part. It's going to be a very long video, Krilly. you got to pick up the pace. So let's go ahead and uh, get the indication here of the uh, one of the knees that crosses past this lower line. If you're looking, you know, you're trying to follow the guidelines here. Then I'll put the other knee over here. Looks a little weird. Looks like she's got super short, stubby little uh, legs, but that's not what's going on. Uh, when I get the feet in there, it'll look a little, a little less strange. See, the the leg is actually this is the knee, and it's going back. And then over here, I'm going to put in uh, indications of the feet. So put that in place, and uh, I figure that the other foot is largely obscured, but I'm going to get just a little bit of a uh, hint of it back here. And let's put a line here that will be sort of the lower hem, if that's the right word, I'm sure it isn't, <laughs> of her jacket. And over here, uh, and this will be the last of what I would think of as the super basic guidelines, I'm going to have uh, a line for her tail. Now watch here, it starts from just above the heel and it curves across and uh, it has a tight little curl here at the end. And believe it or not, I actually looked up reference of cats, you know, photographs of uh, cats to see how do their tails curve really. We sort of imagine them curving in uh, infinitely flexible variety of ways, but I noticed in a lot of these photographs that the tail was uh, fairly straight for a lot of its uh, little journey away from the body, and then uh, very often uh, curving quite tightly at the end. And um, I'm going to make it fairly rounded rather than pointed at the end, although I may try to make it look a little more fluffy later on. And that kind of takes us to where we need to be in terms of uh, basic guidelines. Uh, without a second to spare, because I think we've used up like 10 minutes or something on just this uh, opening guideline stuff. But that's what you get when you do, when you commit yourself to real time. I'm going to start to put in a couple of lines here for the hair. Um, notice that they sort of neatly frame uh, the eyes curving up towards, I guess you could imagine them curving towards the top of the head, and then I'm going to drop in uh, some uh, bangs here. 
Uh, I would encourage you, as I generally do, to create your own hairstyle, make this drawing your own. Don't feel like, oh, I have to draw every single line in exactly the same place that Curly did. Uh, where's the fun in that, really? But this is where this uh, line that I put in and put in initially uh, helps us find uh, the location of the eyebrows. And uh, yeah, just sort of gently curving lines. I'm going to draw them so that you see them straight through the hair. I'm not going to try to, you know, have them hiding behind the hair, though you are welcome to attempt that if you wish. And I'm going to add now a few more curving lines here at the end. Going to keep her hair fairly short. I thought it might be kind of cute, though, if she has uh, uh, one little um, strand of hair unruly. That one unruly strand. I always did this with Miki, actually, from Miki Falls. She always had one unruly strand that was going off to one side. It was a metaphor, man, for that one part of her life that she could never get under control. <laughs> I hope it wasn't that, but <laughs> anyway. Um, these not, because I'm doing this all real time. Any random thought that pops into my head becomes part of the video for all eternity. Now, I'm adding a second line here. This is the line of the hair, and I sort of mentioned this earlier. To make it look like the, the ears really are kind of coming out from uh, her head and not sort of just uh, back behind her like uh, someone doing funny uh, bunny ears or something. I'm, uh, gonna, I'm erasing that line of the head, and so hopefully the placement of the ears makes it look more you know, like they really are coming out of the head. Now, uh, this may look a little funny the way I'm doing this, but I'm trying to indicate uh, that her head is maybe turned a little to the side. And so we're gonna see the upper outside edge of uh, the ears as they point away. Don't know if that works anatomically speaking, but I noticed in a lot of uh, illustrations of cat ears, uh, Neko girls, chibi and otherwise, that they got this sort of ear fluff in here. Different artists would accentuate this to different degrees. Some of them would make the ear fluff quite gigantic. Alarmingly so. I'm gonna try to keep mine I'm taming the ear fluff. <laughs> taming the ear fluff. That'll be the next uh, band album name. Uh, for uh, the blushies, taming the ear fluff in stores. Uh, in any case, um, I think that takes care of that. Oh, let's go ahead and get the mouth in here. And then this um, ever important uh, central vertical line is going to help us for placing the mouth. Um, I've decided, and I pretty rarely do this, but I'm going to give just a little bit of a um, cat like upper lip here so that it's, uh, you know, sort of cleft in the middle. Uh, notice that it, yeah, it starts uh, maybe just barely crosses that central line in terms of placement. And then I'm going to drop in the uh, cute little mouth. I'm going to give her no nose at all, uh, in keeping with the chibi tradition. Now let's go down here and do the uh, hands. And like I said, uh, very often, and you just see like people doing this who are trying to do a cat pose. They'll sort of scrunch up their hands and uh, almost balling them into fists. And then uh, sort of, let's see, I can maybe do it myself. They're sort of doing this with their hands. Um, and so you're trying to do an indication of that. You may, hopefully you can see this is the pinky because of the point of view that's coming in here. I'm going to put, sort of putting a wrinkle in there. And then I'm just going to put maybe three little uh, fingers separated by two short lines. And that, cre that creates one of the uh, hands. Now over here, I think I have to um, sort of break a little with what I drew initially to, again, get that feeling of the clenched fist. And what happens here is you're going to see the thumb more clearly. The thumb is holding the fingers in place. And uh, maybe because it's a little more in profile, I'm not going to try so hard to. <clears throat> Actually, those wrinkle lines are looking weird to me. Looking a little too wrinkly. I think just one line will do it. I mean, the, the truth is when you're doing chibi characters, you're not supposed to put a lot of details into the hands anyway. But I think I am going to get an indication of the one other thumb over here. Now we'll move down to the clothes. This video is not going to focus too much on the clothes, uh, but I'm going to get a V shape here, and then 
uh, later on do a um, sort of like ribbon necktie ribbon uh, I imagine this is some sort of school uniform maybe she goes to Neko girl school where everyone even the principal is a Neko and uh, I'm gonna make one line that goes right down the middle sort of zigzagging just a bit and I always like to make sure that I get the buttons on the right side because I know that uh, for female or for women's clothing the buttons are on a particular side versus male and uh, so I hope I've got this right that uh, making them over to the left uh, or over to her right is the proper location. I'm going to get a couple of wrinkles here at the race, waist, the raced, <laughs> uh, going across. Oh, you know one thing I want to do here is I'm going to have this separate a little. I always like to have the clothing uh, split just a little at the bottom there to make it a little more clear what the structure is. And let's give her a pleated skirt. Uh, I like uh, drawing the pleated skirt because the lines uh, allow you to sort of indicate some of the form, right? So she's, you can imagine her uh, thighs underneath uh, the skirt, and so these lines are kind of suggesting. Uh, that shape and that sort of helps you put that across and I like to do a sort of pleated edge uh, if you can see what I'm doing there that uh, really helps convey the idea that this is a pleated skirt like I said I'm probably going to add just a little bit of fluff here at the end of that tail and I believe that's it for the major guidelines. And normally I would be saying, I'm gonna pull out my trusty Prismacolor and kick it into time-lapse, but not today. Uh, no time-lapse today, but I am going to pull out my trusty black Prismacolor to start uh, adding lines here. And this is where I get a little worried that I'm gonna run out of things to say. That's why I usually just time-lapse through this stuff. But uh, let's see, maybe I can think of advice uh, in terms of you know, adopting this technique if you want to do this black colored pencil technique. Oh, you know, I'm going to do just a little sort of indication of fur at the end of these ears, I think. Um, and I think this advice would probably apply to both colored pencils and ink pens, um, and especially when you're doing chibi characters, to whatever degree you can get the line done in a single stroke uh, is very helpful. So that's what I'm trying to do here. And um, go ahead and do the fluff lines. Drop them in there. The, my coloring tool is going to be marker. Now very often in the past you've probably seen me do the marker uh, first and then do save these lines for later. And uh, indeed, I may come to regret this decision, but I thought uh, actually, depending on how careful I am with my um, markering skills, I may be able to even take advantage of that tendency for the uh, lines to blend in a little bit. I thought I might be able to um, make some shading, you know, make some, let the black Prismacolor mix just a little bit with the marker, see what that does. I'm not going to be um, adding color to the face. This is my coloring scheme will be a, really just a two-tone coloring scheme, two different colors, a light beige-ish brown and then a, a slightly darker, um, more ochre kind of a color. And that's it. You know, I had to strategize, I must say, with this video in terms of how do I how do I teach something that looks good but uh, can be finished within about 20 or 30 minutes because I don't want to make a 40, 50 minute video. Uh, I suppose I could, but I do fear that people see that, you know, oh my goodness, 50 minutes, no time. I got to watch another video instead of this one. So that's why I thought, let's keep this as simple as possible and then try to cut down on the amount of time it takes. In which case, I think it probably means I should <laughs> kick my hand into time-lapse and try to get these uh, lines in here a little faster. 
Um, but I was saying earlier that try to get the lines, if you can, in there with a single stroke. Uh, that, that line will tend to be uh, more graceful than if you go over and over the same line multiple times. Um, but, you know, anytime I say something like that, I w always want to stop and say, well, no, you know, you may come up with your own style, your own way of um, doing lines that have multiple uh, layers to them. I never want to say, hey, this is the way. I always want to just say, this is a way. I'm going to try to do this, though, with one stroke of the pencil. Not the most beautiful line I've ever made. And let's come back here. I did notice that there was, uh, the cat's tails are pretty uniform in width until they get a little closer to the body, and then they get just a tiny bit thicker. And coming across here, again, hopefully I can just sort of speed things up a little bit, because I'm eager to move on to the uh, coloring as soon as possible. I think we've put about 20 minutes into just uh, all this prep work. And I had hoped to add a little plate at the end with a uh, taiyaki. Those of you who know your Japanese pastries, you may know the taiyaki is a sort of uh, fish-shaped pastry that is beloved by Neko girls everywhere, <laughs> mainly because of that cat-like shape, I've, or a cat-like shape, the fish-like uh, shape that the pastry has. Everyone knows that cats love to eat fish, so I guess when it's a pastry shaped like a fish, that somehow <laughs> works out. Now, I'm going to pull out my uh, trusty kneaded eraser. Can the kneaded eraser be trusty? I think so. And try to uh, dab away, or I'm going to pretty vigorously get rid of the uh, prep lines, the guidelines that were at the beginning. Um, try to be a little gentler when we come in here to the middle um, to erase the Dixon Ticonderoga, the sort of ordinary pencil lines that were at the beginning. Um, boy, I would definitely really <laughs> prefer to be doing this part in time lapse. It does seem a little silly to uh, show me erasing in real time, but I've committed to this, man. I'm in this. I'm in it to win it, man. I'm not going to use time lapse. Not today. So we got uh, hopefully all of those lines erased as best I can, and now it's time to see if I can pull this off with uh, adding marker after having put down the uh, uh, black prisma color. So, like I said, this is going to be. Oh, and I'm using a uh, Latracet Tria Pantone. You got three different things to choose from in terms of what to call this thing. People want to know where do I get these? Just at the art store. They also want to know where was it manufactured? Well, it was made in England. Uh, London, I'm guessing. No, people don't really. <laughs> people don't want to know where it's manufactured. I'm just being a goofball. So um, I am using actually the thicker side of the two to uh, add a, a simple beige uh, color here to her ears. And so far so good. It's not like uh, overly blending with the um, color pencil. I'm going to try to make the exterior of the ear darker by building it up a little than the interior. Seems a little funny, but when I looked at photographs, very often cats' ears uh, in real life seem to have that kind of a color scheme. Darker on the outside, lighter on the inside. Now, of course, once you've decided that the ears are beige, then uh, it sort of makes sense for uh, the tail to also be the same color. So that is exactly what I'm doing. And then from there, you know, when you're doing sort of a duotone or two different colors, then you just sort of work out a strategy for uh, continuing to use that color. Um, my theory is to not have them touch each other. So, you know, instead of making her hair uh, beige, I decided to make the uh, sort of jacket uh, beige, and that way the ears, you know, the, the color is being repeated throughout the piece, but not like right next to each other. And um, go ahead, going in there, going to add, uh, finish off the coloring here. 
<laughs> this is what happens when I don't do time lapse. I just reach certain points where my brain just dies. And I'm uh, dragging a marker uh, across the page. <laughs> and, uh, oh, the last thing I'm going to do is add um, this same beige color to her uh, socks. She must be inside on the tatami, so she had to remove her shoes. And that, I believe, is all of the beige color. Shows you my sort of color scheme there. I think we are getting a little of that blending I was talking about. See how if I um, move the marker across the pencil, it's starting to pick up a little bit of... Now some people will be, you're making your marker dirty, man! And indeed I am. Guilty as charged. But, uh, you know, maybe if I... Uh, uh, put this marker on the white page, I can sort of uh, clean it off a bit, but I wanted to show that that is a technique that I sometimes use. And now it is high time to switch to this other marker. This one is a touch marker by Shinhan Art, manufactured in uh, Korea, I'm thinking Seoul, maybe? If you have other information, let me know. Um, I'm just being silly about that. But people do they really want to know, where do you get this stuff? What, what is it? What is the name? What is the serial number? Um, but to, to be serious for a moment in terms of addressing those questions, uh, I'm. it's hard for me to answer when someone says, where do you get that? Because um, I've got viewers all over the world, right? And so uh, I, I could start naming American... Uh, craft stores and stuff, but what about the person who's, uh, you know, in Spain uh, or Russia or Hong Kong uh, or Dubai? I mean, these people, uh, it's not doing them any good if I start naming American craft stores. So really what uh, I want to say is look, you know, maybe use the internet to discover your local art supply store. Um, and it may not be this exact brand that they have there, but the chances are an art store is going to sell a quality uh, marker of some kind. That's just the only... When it comes to markers, you know, people who watch my videos, you know that I don't like to obsess over brands. Oh, look at that. I drew right on top of her hand. Um, let's see if I can fix that. I'm going to draw... Maybe the hair is somehow getting right <laughs> in front of her hand. <laughs> Got to be more careful. Uh, in any case, um, I don't like to obsess about brands, but I will tell you this. If you are using markers that you bought at a gas station uh, or a grocery store or a drug store, you know, chances are those are not uh, top quality markers. So I would advise you, if, you're, if you want to draw with markers and you're worried about quality, um, support your local art store, uh, whatever it is, uh, in your lo lo you know, local area, and they will get you some decent markers. Now I'm switching over to the other side of this one to uh, color in the uh, buttons and the ribbon. And I guess I'll go ahead and uh, darken in her mouth. I did a video recently where I left the mouth white and people were like, you forgot to color the mouth. So uh, that will hopefully take care of that. Now the one thing I wanted to do, and I, I see, because uh, I am sort of actually running a stopwatch to <laughs> make sure that I uh, know how much time I'm using here, I did want to do this idea of the um, plate that has the uh, taiyaki on it. So I'm going to come over here and just quickly dash that in. It's going to be a, sort of a basic oval shape. Um, a little tricky to do this just on the fly, but um, if you want to add uh, a dish like this, do your best. Uh, I've lined it, uh, I've had it line up with that lower uh, line guideline that I put in before. Uh, in terms of this taiyaki, again, I feel that it uh, behooves me to <laughs> speed onward with this video. And so I'm not going to sit here saying, okay, draw this line here and draw that line there. And let's just say that uh, as I looked at cartoony drawings of um, taiyaki uh, pastries, the lips, they would always draw the big fish lips that you expect to see. Um, I'm going to put a little bugged out eye there. Um, of course, the gill. Uh, maybe just three crossed lines on either side, and then uh, I want to get the li lines here on the fin. 
And uh, let's quickly then finish this up. Oops, not my most beautiful line work here. People say, how do you keep your pencil sharp? Well, normally, you know, I have edits in these videos. It's not all in one continuous take, and so I would just pause to sharpen. I guess I should have done that. <laughs> Brilliant, Mark. Now you think of it. Actually sharpening, um, trying to draw lines with a, a freshly sharpened uh, Prismacolor can be pretty lethal because the thing will snap to shatter. And there's this sort of golden zone that you uh, hopefully can reach. All right, I guess I will uh, sharpen this for just a second. What are we doing here? Over 30 minutes already. It's going to be a long one, folks. Buckle up. It'll be interesting to see what people say about this uh, video. It's a little bit of an experiment uh, trying to do the no time lapse challenge for a, well, not full color, but uh, certainly partially colored illustration. See what people think of this. Are you happy that I did a uh, video that was uh, all real time? Or are you beginning to regret <laughs> having even suggested the idea? I had no idea it was going to be this boring, man. Okay, okay, please go back to time lapse before we all fall asleep. Not the most beautiful plate I've ever drawn, I must say. Too late now. Let's go ahead and uh, use. I'm using this same sort of ochreish uh, color in, in a way that's partly why I chose to have uh, this as one of the two colors. I wanted to have a good uh, color for the taiyaki. So, isn't that interesting? The taiyaki actually determined the color scheme to a large degree. I think this will look better if I get just a, another couple of lines here to. Give this a little more of a plate-like appearance. It's plate plateishness. It's platitude is sadly lacking. And I wanted to um, use this beige thing. This was another reason that I chose this beige, as I thought that it could make for nice uh, drop shadow. So I'm going to go back here, give my little Neko girl a. Uh, drop shadow. Some people will get quite um, fastidious about the drop shadow having it match the character. I think I'm going to kind of cheat it and just maybe do the two pointy ears <laughs> and leave it at that. It's, it clearly is not scientifically based on uh, the shape of her body, but I did want to get a little bit of a shadow here. And you have to pay attention to what you did because th this means the shadow should be going in that direction, right? Right, Krilly? Eh? Don't have two conflicting shadows. I hate it when people do that. Um, and actually, it is kind of a weird <laughs> shadow going off in all directions. But there you have it, folks. And I think that I'm very nearly done at this point. Aren't you glad? Um, two last things that I want to do is to add the word nian in uh, Japanese, you know, using hiragana, have her sing nian. Don't ever do that again. It sounded terrible. And uh, I even asked my wife, uh, who is Japanese, about the stroke order of the ya there. <laughs> Hope I made the ya small enough. And uh, it's going to be nya. Get a little stretchy line there. Nya. And there you go. That gives you uh, her sound effect. And believe it or not, Talk about being over ambitious, and I think this is going to get us pretty close to 40 minutes on this video, sadly. Um, but I did want to pull out my ever popular gouache, and since I do have it at the ready, let's go ahead and do it. Gouache! And uh, I'm going to <laughs> go ahead and just do this really just for the hair. That's the one thing that I'm going to do with the gouache is to add a uh, highlight going across her hair. And that, I think, will actually be the end of it. Whew. I feel like the marathon runner finally, hey, the end is in sight, the finish line, almost there. Um, 
I don't know. It's sort of fun. It's fun to 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 attempt this uh, real time challenge kind of a thing. But it, I must admit, it could be a little nerve wracking. So it's just nice to have little breaks every once in a while, folks. You can understand that, can't you? Can't you? And um, yeah, hopefully this will. Look what I did. I just <laughs> put it. Don't do that, people. I just added a little drop to my finger. Um. And sadly, that's going to have to be it. You know, I suppose I could have gone in with uh, colored pencil and so forth, but uh, boy, we don't want this video to go on forever. And I think what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, is I am going to allow myself to hit the pause button while I go uh, grab my books, and then we can wind this video up with some final words. All right, well, you know, I always like to wrap things up by thanking people who've uh, supported me by getting any of my graphic novel series like Brody's Ghost uh, or Miki Falls or my How to Draw books like Mastering Manga and Mastering Manga 2. Always very deeply appreciative uh, of anyone who helps me out by getting any of those books. But, you know, this video couldn't possibly be over until I added the blushies, the all-important blushies, here to our little uh, cat girl. Again, not in time-lapse. I'm not doing this in time-lapse, people. It's all in one continuous take. It's like the movie Birdman. This video might be nominated for an Academy Award. In any case, I think it is high time for me to lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.